Hey man, God bless you. God bless all of you. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm most certainly honored to be able to be before you all yet another week to minister, to teach, to exhort unto you the word of God. And, you know, tonight I'm not going to be before you long, but I want to uh, really as the year closes out, you know, I really want to again stress that starting in January, um, you know, plugged in ministries is going we're going to be talking um about the ten commandments and what i would like to do is just inform you guys of that now but um then again tonight we're going to be talking about posi being positioned and postured uh for victory um being positioned and being postured for victory um it does not matter you know what the situation is it does not matter you know what it looks like you have to know we have to know that we serve a God who has never lost. We serve a God who is able. He's He's able. He can do exceedingly and abundantly above everything that we can ever ask or think. And it's most certainly an honor to be able to be before you all to teach you the word of God um, on this evening. And so, you know, we're going to be coming from the book of Exodus uh, chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. And we are going to begin reading at verse number 11. The context is when Moses and the Israelites were fighting the Amalekites. And, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture here for you in just a minute. But um, if you like what you hear, you know, please feel free to share it out with your friends, your family, or, you know, whoever you believe uh, may be blessed by this word. And so, you know, there was a, there came a point. Um, in the battle where Moses had, he had lifted his hands. As long as he lifted his hands, Israel was winning. But when he, when he tried to put his hands down, what happened was the Amalekites were winning. And so it's very important for us to uh, maintain our posture. That was one thing that really stood out to me um, during my study time of this was, you know, maintain your posture. It does not matter what it looks like. If you've been praying, keep on praying. If you've been fasting, you've been studying, keep on fasting and studying. Keep being faithful in what God has told you to do and watch him come through. Watch him. He'll show up when you least expect it. He'll show you. He'll show up when you least expect it. I almost guarantee that he will show up when you least expect it. So we're going to say a word of prayer. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now to say thank you. God, we thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. God, I pray and ask that as we go forth and you in the word this evening, that you be with us. Lord, help us to get something from this teaching that, that we can apply to our lives, Lord God. Lord, you want us to be he not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word, God. We pray and ask that you will bless us, that you will keep us, God, that you will anoint my lips, God, that you will give me what to say and how to say it. And I thank you, Lord, for these and all things in Jesus name. Amen. OK. And all of you that are watching, God bless you. It is good to see you. Um, it's, I'm going to go ahead here and get started. I'm going to invite just a couple more people on. Um, but turn with me to uh, Exodus chapter uh, 17, Exodus chapter 17. And we are going to begin reading um, at verse number 11. Exodus 17 and 11. And the Bible says this. It says, And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers and doers of his word. I am going to give you just a couple of definitions um, on this evening uh, before we go ahead and go forth into the lesson. And so, you know, Amalek, Amalek. What is Amalek? It was, um, it, it, Amalek was, the definition of it is, it's a biblical Canaanite nation, right? It, it's, it's a nation of a bunch of Canaanites that were descended from um, Esau's grandson, Amalek. He, and Amalek, when, if, if you study the scriptures, was a legendary foe. He was a legendary enemy. He was a legendary, uh, what, what you would call in a story, an, an antagonist um, of the Israelites. And the, he was, it was also the first nation to attack the Israelites after the, their exodus from Egypt. Um, and then you look at prevail. Prevailed is to prove more powerful than opposing forces or to be victorious, right? And so then you look at generation. What is a generation? The definition of a generation is this. All of the people born and living at about the same time, and they're regarded to collectively. So as a collective group, as a collective unit, that is a the definition of a generation. And so when we look at this text, right, what can we get from this? What can we get from this? The first thing that I got from this uh, when I when I was doing uh, my personal study time and I was looking at this, keep your arms held up. You know, in church, sometimes when we we lift our arms, you know, like we say, you know, the, the pastor will say, you know, lift your hands and you lift your hands to God. What are you saying? Right. Ask yourself this next time you lift your hands. What am I saying? Because lifting your hands is more than you just obeying something that somebody told you. Lifting your hands is a posture of surrenderance. When you look at the when you look at the scripture, you know, when you lift your hands, what are you doing? You're taking your pro your hands off the problem. Right. When you lift your hands, what are you doing? You're, you're in a posture. You're in a position where you're expect where, where you're allowing God to work on his time. And you're, you're basically taking your hands off of the situation. Right. So. So what happens is this. When, when we say lift our hands, you know, for example, if you've ever been stopped by, you know, unfortunately by a police officer or anything like that, you know, sometimes they'll say, you know, hands up, you know, don't move. When, when you have your hands up, what are you doing? First of all, you're showing them that, you know, nothing is in my hand. Next, you're saying, I'm surrendering. You know, I'm not fighting you. I'm not opposing you. See, the same thing. When we lift our hands to God, we're showing them like, God, here are my hands. Here I am. I'm not fighting you. Do what you want to do. Use me the way that you want to use me. You understand? So many times in life, we run into situations where we don't know how we got there. Whatever your situation may be, there are times in life where, where we get into situations and we wonder how we got there. Sometimes we feel like quitting. You know, and I don't see, I, I've, I've been here the last couple of months, you know, I've seen several um, instances where people have quit, you know, people that I know personally, they've either quit their job, they've quit doing something, you know, they've quit preaching, they've quit ministering, they've, you know, quit uh, uh, pursuing things in life that they want to pursue. Sometimes we feel like quitting. Sometimes we feel like giving up. We feel like throwing in the towel. We feel like saying, this is it. I'm out of here. I've had enough. I want nothing to do with this. We feel like all hope is lost. Sometimes you have may, may have been denied for um, employment. You may have been denied for, uh, uh, you know, a promotion. And sometimes, you know, you may feel like you're going in circles and you're going in circles and you're going in circles and nothing seems to be working. Right. But then when we when we sometimes feel like that all hope is lost at that point, we sometimes feel like in some cases for I don't know where you are um, in your relationship with God. But many times, you know, you feel that that God has left you. You feel like God has left you in a situation. He has left you in a in a place. He has left you in a predicament that you cannot get out of. You feel like that sometimes. And I'm just going to be transparent with you. There have been times where I have felt like that. You know, the, the, you may feel like you're in a situation where there's no hope, where there's no victory. You know, you may be in a situation where you don't know how it's going to work out. But watch this. One morning, I, I was, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. One morning, I was running at the gym. One morning I was running at the gym. I began to reach a certain point in my workout where I got tired. And as I began to get tired, I began to crouch over. Now we know that when, for those of us that work out, when you crouch over, that's actually the worst thing that you can do. Because what happens is you, you, you end up, you end up getting into a place where you're cutting off oxygen. 
When you crouch over like that, you're cutting off oxygen. So as I begin to crouch over, uh, most people know, you know, when your hands are down, you know, when you're in a crouch position, you can't get much air to your lungs. Eventually, it's going to be hard for you to breathe. No, no exaggeration. Watch this. Watch this. When I was crouched over, the, the Lord told me, he said, keep your arms up. And usually what does that happen? When you work out, you're not just having your arms up here. You're having your arms up here. Or you're having your arms up here. You're having your arms up here. What is that? You're, 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 you're trying to get more oxygen to your lungs, right? So, you know, let's go back to this. Moses sent Joshua forth with an army of Israelites. He sent them forth with an army of Israelites to fight Amalek who was an opposer of the Israelite army. Now watch this, y'all. Sometimes you may feel like while you have, to, you know, you may feel in life like you will have to stop, run, that you have to run from your enemies. You don't have to run from anybody. All you have to do is face them and fight. David said what? He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I fear? So what David was saying is that God is my light, meaning he's directing my path. He's my salvation, meaning that he will save me from my enemies. And he said, whom shall I fear? Meaning that what do I have to be afraid of? Who do I have to be afraid of? Why do I have to be afraid? Now, when we look at what fear really is, watch this. Fear can stand for two things. Fear can be an acronym in your life. And whatever it is, you know, whether you're optimistic, whether you're pessimistic, fear can stand for two different things. It can be forget everything and run, meaning the adverse, meaning you can you can uh, face a situation and just run away from it. You can have a problem and you can run away from it. Or fear can stand for this. Face everything and rise because you know that God is going to God is going to come through for you. You know that God is going to vindicate you. You know that as long as you keep your hands off of the problem, that God is going to work it out. What did God say? He said in his word, he said, vengeance is mine and I will repay it. Meaning that watch this, as I walk with the most high, I don't have to worry about anything. Why? Because he already has everything in his hands. He already has everything in control. Let's go back to verse 11, right? Let's go back. Uh, we're in exit. For those of you just tuning in, uh, we are in Exodus chapter 17. Um, we're going back to verse 11. It says, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. Verse verse 12 says, but Moses hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Now watch this, y'all. Moses, as long as he maintained a certain position, he was having good success. As long as he maintained a certain position, he was winning. The Israelites were winning. You know, and, and, and what it, that is saying is that many times in life, we must maintain a certain posture while God is working on our behalf. We must maintain a certain position while God is giving us the victory. Now, a position of praise. It may not you be, it may not be you lifting your hands up. It may not be you running around the church. It may, it may be just you sitting there saying, "Lord, I thank you." God, or saying, "And you hey, God, I just thank you for the victory. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're going to do." Now, watch this. A position of praise. Meaning I'm praising God not only for what he has already done, but what he is already getting ready to do for me in my life. Now, and there's also a position, you can be in a position of fasting, where you turn your plate over, where you give up something, where you're crucifying your flesh. Your flesh. The Bible says what? Your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Right now, there, that's another position. You can also be in a position of thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for this. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for provision. Lord, I thank you for protection. You can be in a position of prayer, not only praying for yourself, but praying for your brothers and sisters, praying for those who don't like you, praying for those who have despitefully used you, praying for those who have cut you out of their life. Praying for those who it doesn't make sense to pray for, but because God has given you that command, he's given you that, that task to pray for them, you're doing it out of obedience. Now, watch this. His hands were lifted up. So as long as he began to, as long as he was lifting his hands, he was in victory, but he began to get tired. But what, sometimes in life, you know, when we maintain our position, sometimes we get tired. 
You may have been on your job two and three and four years, no promotion, no raise, no recognition, no nothing. But watch this. I'm here to encourage you tonight to maintain your position, maintain your posture, keep being faithful, keep doing a great job, keep excelling, keep doing what it is that you know how to do. Some of you may be in a position in church where you, you may be doing all the grunt work. You may be doing all the grunt work and you may be getting overlooked. Some of y'all may be on the music ministry and you get no appreciation. If anything, you get mad, you, people get mad at you because they can't sing. But I'm not even going to go down that road tonight. You know, watch this. When you lift your hands, you may get tired. You may get weak. You may like feel, get, feel like giving up. But I want you to maintain your position. And God is saying, stay in position. Watch this. As you maintain Maintain your position. God is saying, I will fight for you. Watch this. If God is for you, the Bible says what? Who can be against you? You can find that in Romans 8 and 31. As you maintain your position, God is saying, I'll handle your enemies. I will handle your situation. I will handle the circumstance. I will handle it. God is saying, give it to me. I will do it. I will solve it. I will work it out for you. What did he say in Romans 8 and 28 through the apostle Paul? He said, all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So the solution is not giving up. The solution is not throwing in the towel. The solution is not jumping off a bridge. The solution is not committing suicide. The, com the, 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 <laughs> the solution is not going in the opposite direction that the Lord has told you to go. And you know his voice. He said what? My sheep know my voice. That means if you belong to God, you know exactly what his voice sounds like. You know exactly when he is talking to you. You already know. And, and watch this. Lifting your hands says, I'm taking my hands off the problem. God, you're, you're saying, God, here it is. God, here's my problem. Here's my situation. God, here's my desires. God, here's my lust. God, here's my backbiting. God, here is my fornication problem. God, here is my stealing. Here is my vanity. God, here is my idolatry. God, here, I'm taking my hands off of it and I'm giving it to you because I know that you are the only one that can fix this for me. Now, when you have your hands lifted, when you have your hands off the problem, when you have your hands off the situation, if you have, when you have your hands lifted, you show that you surrender. When you do this, you know, it, 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 it allows God. And I, and that's the word I really want to use. Thank you, Lord. It allows him to move on your behalf. See, the longer that you keep your hand on the problem, the harder that problem is going to become. But the minute you take your hand off of the problem, God can move freely. You understand what I'm saying? Now, watch this. I'm, I'm going to say this now to us that go to church. God is asking this to the church. What is in your hand? Because some of us have a problem lifting our hands. What is in your hand? God said, give it to me. God said, let me have it. I don't know. I don't know who this is for, but God said, give me your problem. Let me have it. Let me have your circumstance. He said, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. Give me that heartbreak. It is the holiday season. Do you know that depression in this season is at an all time high? But I hear God say now, give me that problem. Give me that situation. Give it to me. Let me help you. Let me solve it. Let me fix it. Let me heal that broken heart. Let me heal those wounds. Not only so that you can be healed, but so that when you go forth, you're not bleeding out over other people. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to say this. You may get tired, but keep your hands lifted. You may feel like it's over. Keep your hands lifted. Maintain your position. Maintain your position. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it looks like. And I don't care who told you that all hope is lost. The Lord said, maintain your position. Now, let's move forward. Sometimes you need 
an errand in your life. Sometimes you need someone that is going to help you, that is going to see you through. Let's go back to verse number 12. Let's see what the Bible has to say about this. It says, but Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Now, he got tired. Some of us get tired. Man, watch this, man. Some of us feel like giving up. Some of us felt like giving up this week. Some of us, look there. Some of us felt like giving up today. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, no, I'm not here to hoop and scream. And I don't do that stuff. But somebody felt like giving up. But I'm here to tell you and I'm here to encourage you to hang on in there. Now, watch this. Sometimes when our hands are lifted, they get tired. Sometimes when, you know, you, you got your hands lifted, you allow God to work on the situation, but it doesn't seem like, you know, it's moving. It doesn't seem like things are getting better. Sometimes it seems like things are getting worse. You know, I, I was going through that recently when I was going, when I was job hunting. You understand what I'm saying? But God came through and he allowed me to find something. You understand? He allowed me to find something good, not just some any old thing, something good. And so, you know, the, the, your hands may get tired. You know, sometimes, be, why? Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Because a lot of times when you lift your hands, you know, your shoulder muscles get tired and everything like that. Watch this. The Lord said, sometimes your, your, your reason why you get tired is because you are in an unnatural position. What am I saying? We tend to take our hands and when we have them down on the situation, when we have them on the problem, we, it, it, it's natural. We don't get tired of that. Why? Because. The reason why we don't get tired is because when we have our hand, we're, we're in a natural position. We, we automatically, naturally want to take control of things. We automatically want to, you know, do things our own way. We want to do things our own way. But, you know, see, the scriptures teach us. They say, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not lean to your own understanding. It says, but in all of your ways to acknowledge him. Didn't say acknowledge anybody else. It said acknowledge him. What does acknowledge mean? Just ask. Pray. Seek his face on the situation. Look, if you lack wisdom in an area, if you lack understanding, get an understanding. Seek clarity. Many times we bump our head, not because, uh, not because, you know, we're not smart people, but we lack clarity on certain things. And so sometimes when our hands are lifted, they begin to become heavy. The blood begins to rush, you know, but I'm going to encourage you to keep them lifted. Why? Because when, because eventually what happens is this, you know, you're in this position and it may feel uncomfortable. It may feel unnatural at, work, at, at first, but over time, what happens when you lift your hands, it becomes second nature. You don't get tired. Your, your body doesn't get weak. You understand what I'm saying? You know, sometimes we get we get so they get so heavy that you find yourself dropping your hands. But watch this. We see in the text, the Bible says this. They took a stone. Verse we're still on verse 12. It says they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon. And Aaron and her stayed up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. Sometimes you need some really sound, some really good people in your life that will help you when you feel like giving up. Sometimes you need some people in your life that will give you that encouragement, that will set you back on the right track, that will give you a nice talking to if that is what you need at that time, that will give you a listening ear if that is what you need at that time. Now watch this. They took it, it says this, his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Sometimes in your life, your problem, your situation, your circumstance, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, it may get too heavy for you to bear alone. Moses, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the book of Numbers here. Moses was leading the Israelites and, and watch this. He was getting old. But God was going to send him some help. Let me show you this in the Bible. Go with me to uh, Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. And we're going to go to verse number uh, 16. And we're going to read 16 and 17. And it says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
Gather thee unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Meaning, come before me, but bring some people with you. What does verse 17 say? I will come down. This is God talking. He said, I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit, which is upon thee, and will put it upon them that they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. God is saying, I'm sending you some help. I'm sending you some resources. I'm sending you that what you need. Now let's, let's, let's read back. Let's read verse 17 again. I want to make sure that we have a, a, a clear understanding of what this is saying. It says, I will come down and will talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit, which is upon thee and will put it upon them that they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bearest it not thyself alone. God doesn't want you to bear your problems alone. He now, yes, he doesn't put more on you than you can bear. But sometimes when things get tough, what he'll do? He'll send people. He'll send you to a place. He'll send resources. What did he say? Let's see what Brother Paul says um, over in the New Testament. So see, we can get some New Testament scripture in here. Um, go with me to Philippians uh, chapter four. Philippians chapter four. And we're going to go to uh, verse number 19. And look at what this says. This is Paul talking. Um, he says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He shall supply, meaning he has to. He has to supply. And no, this ain't in my notes. I don't even have that many notes. But I know one thing that God will supply your needs. He supplied mine and the same God that supplied my needs. The same God that came through for me can come through for you. And he will. But you got to keep your hands off the situation or the circumstance or the problem. Does not matter what it is. Does not matter how you phrase it. Keep your hands off. Hands up. Amen. Now, I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. We need a helping hand. We need a helping hand. There's a song that says uh, um, that, that was written a long time ago before I was born. It's called, uh, it's, it goes like this. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on that. You know, that that's just uh, uh, some of the, the, the lyrics, you know, and, and I'm saying that a lot of times in life, we need a helping hand. We all need a shoulder to cry on. We all need a shoulder to lean on. We all need those, those those homies to confide in, you know, your confidant, you know, we, we all, you know, we all need that. Moses got tired. And when you get tired, sometimes you need your right hand man to come in and save the day. Sometimes you need your right hand man to come in and help to support you. Sometimes that is what you need. Sometimes all we need is some support. You understand? All we need is some support, some help. You understand? I'm saying this, you know, the right man, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, the right hand man. Let me tell you about the right hand man. He says that we ride together and we die together. That's your ace. That's your boy. That's your day one. That's your, whatever you want to call him. That is your right hand man. In the hood, they call it a ride or die. I don't know, you know, what hood anybody's from. This is not what this is about, but you know, they, they call it a ride or die. You know, this is my ride or die. Man, we go way back, back in the day. And some, and sometimes, watch this, y'all. Sometimes, you know, some of that, some of that, watch this. Some of that is just, it's not based upon, you know, what they're getting ready to do. But a lot of times, the reason why you call them a ride or die or you call them a day one is because of their track record from the past. And what they have done for you, what they have went through with you, everybody needs somebody like that. Now, watch this, you know. You need a friend, and that friend is Jesus. And Jesus is such a friend, or sometimes he will he will send us people into our life that will help us, that will build us up. Bible says iron sharpens iron. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Now, watch this. They will hold you up when you're down, and that will keep you, and sometimes that will keep you in the fight. 
When you feel like throwing up the white flag, when you feel like surrendering, I'm going to go to another scripture. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 27 um, and verse 17. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You need people around you that are going to help you. You need people around you that are going to lift you up. Now, countenance means support. There are times where we need the support of a few good people. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, we love God. Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit, but sometimes you just need a friend. You understand? You just need a friend. You understand? You know, you need a few good people around you because in this day and age, good friends are hard to find. And watch this. If you have a good friend in your life, if you have good people in your life, Hold on to them. Hold on to them. Here we see Moses had two supporters. Watch this. He had two supporters, but he was journeying with many people. And this tells us when we look into the deeper into the deepness of that right there, this shows us that everybody that you are surrounded by is not necessarily able, nor are they called to support you. There were two people that supported Moses. Aaron and her. Sometimes when your arms get tired and, and, and sometimes when you feel like giving up, the amount of people to lift your arms, the amount of people are very small, which is why I am very adamant when I say, be careful of who you confide in. Some people want to pray for you and some people just want information. Watch this. This means that you must keep your inner circle very small. Not everybody is able to build. Not everybody is able to walk with you. Not everybody is able to do that. You know, everybody is not built to see you when you're weak. I'm going to say it again. Not everybody is built to see you when you're weak or when you're vulnerable. You got to watch that too, because sometimes when you're vulnerable, the wrong person will try to take advantage of you. I'm serious. But watch this. You can be vulnerable with God. You can be transparent with God. And if God does so happen according to his will to send you somebody into your life that you can confide in, that you can, you know, uh, open up to and share deep secrets with, then thank God for that because everybody does not have that in life. Amen. Now, God said this in his word. He said, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Now, if nobody sees the hurt, watch this. He sees it. Watch this. He sees the weak moments. He sees when you're about to give up. He sees when you're about to give in to lust. He sees you. He sees everything. Now watch this. He sees you. God is saying, you have me. I am on your side. I've got your back. Cry out to me. Tell me what burdens you. Tell me what is on your mind. Tell me what is on your heart, said the Lord. See, he even knows what's on your heart. But watch this. He's waiting for you. To tell him what's there. Now, everybody needs an Aaron. Everybody needs an Aaron. Everybody needs a her. That was the name of the second person that held Moses' hands up. To hold you up, you know, you need those types of people when you're about to go down. You know, Psalms 121. Let's go back to the scripture. Psalms 121. Um, we'll begin reading at uh, uh, verse number one. It says, I will lift my eyes up to the hills from whence come my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Watch this. I, I like cartoons. Some of y'all like cartoons. Some of y'all got kids. And they like cartoons. Batman had Robin. Kobe Bryant had Shaq. LeBron James, if y'all sports fan, LeBron James had Kyrie Irving. But watch this. These are examples. Uh, watch this. These are examples of people who were tight. They were close. There are examples in God's word of people, uh, you know, who had significant helpers. They had people there to support them. They had people there to be with them. Now, who were they? Let me give you these examples. Moses had Aaron. David had Jonathan. Elijah had Elisha. Paul had Timothy. 
And we have Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, how do we know that he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Obviously, because he is Lord over all things. And he also came down to die for our sins. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. We have the victory. Just remember that we have the victory. We have the victory as long as we stay in position and we stay where God put us. Stay where God ordained you to be. I don't care what anybody says. Stay where God ordained you to be. Now, through the word, watch this. We see this. Moses did not give up and neither should you. Now, I'm going to say something here. There's a, there, you know, position and posture, right? Those are two words. We use them. We sometimes we use them synonymously. They're almost identical, but they're different. Watch this. A position is a place where someone or something is located or has been put. A posture has several meanings, but in this context, this is what posture means. Posture is a particular way of dealing with or considering something. It's an approach or an attitude. What is your approach? What is your attitude toward your situation? What is it? You know, as Moses stayed in position and maintained his posture, the Israelites got the victory. For us, your position can be your needs um, when you pray to God. Your hands lifted worshiping and thanking God. Your position can be in the book. Your position can be studying about God. As you maintain your posture, your hands may get tired, but watch this. Just stay there. You may get anxious, but just stay there. Just stay in position. You know, let's go to Philippians 4, verses 6 and 8. It says this, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Watch this. Verse 7 is what God promises you if you do that. It says this, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. It says, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, meaning if there's any just a speck of virtue, a speck of praise, a speck of something to look forward to, what does it say? It says, think on these things. It means shift your mindset, shift your focus. Some of us, the reason why our situation hasn't changed is because we have not shifted our focus. You know, now watch this. This is the hour to let God fight for you. This is the hour to trust him with, with, with your life. Trust him. And I'm preaching to myself. He's got everything under control. And if you got to wake up in the middle of the night and you got to say, God, I, I have this situation. I, I, I have this circumstance, but I, I know that you have it under control. If you have to do that every night of the week, seven days a week for one year straight, then do it. Then do it. Watch this. Let's go to Psalms chapter 20. Uh, I want to go and I, and I and it's heavy in the scripture because I want to make sure that you all know that I'm telling you the truth. I'm not feeding you a bunch of stuff that somebody else taught me. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Now, Psalms chapter 20 and verse seven, it says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord, our God with God on your side. You've got the victory and God is going to be for you. If the Bible says if he is for you, then who can be against you? How do we know? You say, Gabriel, how do we know that God is for us? How do we know that God is with us? Because we have the victory. We got the victory over 2,000 years ago when God sent his son Jesus down to die for our sins. Bible tells us this. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is God's will for man to have salvation. It is God's will for you to be saved. 
Now, Romans 10 and 9, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, now, in order for Jesus to be risen from the dead, what had happened first? He had to have died first. So they nailed his hands, they nailed his feet, they pierced him in the side. But watch this. He never said a mumbling word. Even when he was on the cross, what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was committed to doing the will of God, even unto death. You understand what I'm saying? They put Jesus in a tomb, but on the third day, he got out with all power in his hand. Now, that's not even the end of the story. What did he say? Jesus said this. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you. You can find this in John chapter 14. He said, and if I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come back again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. And one of his disciples said, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. There is not 1,000 ways to God. There is only one, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I do want to offer him to you. It is not too late for you to repent and turn from your sins. It is not too late for you to accept the Lord Jesus into your life as the Lord and Savior. Now, if you accept him into your life, you know, again, Romans 10 and 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, God raised him from the dead, thou I shall be saved. There is a way that you must live. There is a way that you must walk. You must live a holy life. You must live a life that's pleasing to God. You know, you if you read through the scriptures, it talks about what to do. Serve him. Don't serve all this other stuff. Serve him. And in January, we're going to be doing a, a very extensive teaching, possibly into February and March, on the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. The 10 rules that God gave Moses originally in the book of Exodus to help govern and help Israel live a moral and, and acceptable life that was pleasing to God. We are going to go over those. We are going to study those. Now, back to Jesus. If you do not know Jesus, you can repeat after me, Father, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. And I believe that he died on the cross for my sins that he was buried, and that he rose on the third day. And I accept him into my life as Lord and Savior. Now, again, you must live a holy life. You can't just live no any kind of way. You can't just live no any kind of way. Now, you know, again, God loves you. And as long, and remember this, if you don't remember anything else I said tonight, I know I said a lot, y'all forgive me. If you, if, if you stay in position and you allow God to work, then I promise you, as you stay with him, he will move on your behalf. And I'm going to say a word of prayer and we're going to get out of here. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for the time that you allowed us to spend in your word. I thank you for everything that you've done for us, everything that you are going to do. God, I pray and ask that you will help us to remember to stay in position, stay postured for victory, because God, we love you. God, we want the, you. We know that you want the best for us, Lord God, but help us, Lord God, to trust you, Lord God. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to lean on you. God, I pray and ask right now in the name of Jesus. God, somebody feels like giving up right now. Somebody feels like throwing in the towel right now, but help us, Lord, to just hang on in there. Help us, Lord God, to know that, that you are for us, God, and you, and you said in your word for us to stand still. You said stand still and see your salvation, and God, we thank you for these and for all things. Keep us safe, Lord God, as we sign off, Lord God, and as we spend the rest of our evening with our families. God, I pray and ask that you will uh, be with us, Lord God. Protect us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I pray and, and ask that something that was said, I pray that it blessed you. And with that being said, I am going to go ahead here and I'm going to sign off and I'm going to go ahead and enjoy the rest of my evening. Y'all be blessed. Lord willing, I will see you all on next week. God bless.